Hello, this is Julius Caesar here, and I'm, well, <sighs> I'm talking about my timeline, Kral Isaiah Yasha. What if the Ottomans were Christian? Inshallah, well, a little bit of irony won't hurt. <laughs> Inshallah, let us start this uh, episode. So, look, you know how Spain conquered Brazil from Portugal? Later on, they actually conquered Portugal. But that conquest or union doesn't last for too long. So... Spain, they eventually get exhausted. The Portugal, the people of Portugal are kind of pissed at that because Spain has been sending in tons of soldiers to fight in a gazillion wars. So, for example, the 80 Years War, the 30 Years War, and the Fourth Jihad against the Ottomans. These are the wars that Spain fought in. Portuguese people are kind of upset at that, so they want independence. They don't want to fight in all these annoying-ass conflicts. So, Portuguese, they declare independence. They get allies. England, France, and the Netherlands. So, eventually, a type of deal is made when it comes to... Well, once the war's ended. Brazil is split between the north, the center, and the south. South is colonized by France. You know, the country with Argentina, Uruguay, Paraguay. Well, they expanded to Brazil. They maintain their colony in southern Brazil and Argentina, and they fortify it. They make it, you know... Because the French could easily see how screwed up their colonization could be. So the French colonized Uruguay, Paraguay, Argentina, some of South Brazil. Portuguese colonized the center of Brazil, and the Dutch, they colonized the north of it. And so, you know how there's the Seven Years' War, right? Well, the Seven Years' War is fought between Sweden, France, Spain, the Ottomans, Russia, and Austria on one side, and Prussia, Britain, and Portugal on the other side. All the side with Prussia, Britain, and Portugal, well, they win. And one of the pretenses to this victory is that Spain gains its independence. With that, they gain their colonies. France keeps most of their colonies except one. You know what that one colony is? Argentina. So the people of Argentina, they're very French, right? True. But the Spanish, when they conquer, they try to instill some sense of Spanish culture in the Spanish language. So, well, let me say this. Spanish culture, well, the Spanish language does not take over French Argentina, even though there are tons of efforts to try to get the French Argentinians to learn that a lot of them live in the Pampas, they live in the grassland, they live far away from everybody else, and they continue speaking their mother tongue, which is French. But some elements of Spanish culture enter in Argentina. And so the Argentinian language and culture is highly influenced by Spain to this day, even though they ultimately speak French. Now, in North America, 
just want to let you know this. Most of the history is the same until the seventeen until the Seven Years' War, in which France keeps Louisiana and Quebec. Well, that's a given. But now let's move on to some more stuff about North America, then we're done with the episode. Well, another thing is that British America and the German colony of Mexico, or Klein Venedig, both of them, they become havens for immigrants. Tons of people fleeing horrible wars in Europe. They go to Klein Venedig, or they go to British America, and they establish their own culture there. So British American and Mexican, well, not Mexican, and German culture. Well, and, well, British American and Mexican culture is highly influenced from Swedish culture, from, you know, Polish culture, French, English, people that don't want wars anymore. They flee to the new world and they build themselves a new goddamn life. And so that is one of the important things about that. Well, in the Seven Years' War, Klein Venedig, well, they gained some of Central America. That's sort of a price, you know, the Klein Venedig, they wanted colonies, so British said, all right, Spain gets their independence, but Klein Venedig, they get Central America. Because of this, an important general within Klein Venedig becomes the king of Klein Venedig. The reason is that the culture must they they need to be they need to let other nations know that they do not wish to start uproars. They do not wish to spread too much Republican ideals, so they get a ceremonial king. This king might be an Aztec, this king might be Spanish or German. I don't know who the king would be, and we're not really going to get to the culture of Klein Venedig until later on in their competition with America. But let's just say this. They get a king, although the monarch's role is rather constitutional. <clears throat> and so that is it with episode four. Can't believe that it's done. Masha'Allah. Well, a little bit of irony there since, you know, it's about a timeline where one of the greatest Islamic nations is... Uh, Christian, but masha'Allah and insha'Allah, I will uh, talk to you soon. Astaghfirullah. This is Julius Caesar getting stabbed by Brutus. <coughs>